Good morning, folks. It's Harrison from Mainly Acres Farms, and please never mind the organized mess here behind me. Today's questions and answers video, I wanted to share with you guys the different thread and needle size combinations that you can use on your sewing machine. I've been getting a lot of great questions in the comment section below in our videos, asking all sorts of questions ranging from what's a recommended uh, size thread and needle to use with a certain weight of leather, or uh, other questions I've gotten is what is the largest size thread and needle I can use on this sewing machine. So hopefully in today's video I'll be able to answer some of those questions. Now you guys may notice here I'm kind of scripted today to kind of keep me uh, on track and um, or on topic onto what we're talking to today. This is the first time I've tried doing something like this so hopefully it'll work out. You guys let me know down in the comments below. So to get started on the threads that I use for my machine, I thought it would be kind of interesting to talk about the different um, type of materials that some of these threads are made out of, uh, what style is recommended for sewing the leather. So that's what we're going to jump right on into. So uh, typically it is recommended to use a bonded nylon thread when you're sewing leather, vinyl, and rubber together. Uh, the reason being is because the um, bonded nylon is very strong and it is fairly smooth so going in between the layers of leather or rubber uh, just makes it that much easier. Another thread to make mention is this monofilament thread. A few of you guys may have had a spool like this sent out with your machine. This is also really good for leather sewing, uh, vinyl, and rubber as well because this stuff here, instead of being a braided material like these bonded nylons are, this is a monofilament line. So kind of think of it as your fishing line. You guys that go out fishing, that's exactly what this is. Uh, I would definitely recommend a larger size, especially if you're uh, putting together some items that are going to be used quite heavily, uh, but this is a good option to use as well. Uh, another um, thread here, this is a just a plain cotton thread. This is a T1, so this is pretty much uh, the smallest thread that I know of on the cotton, and this is basically used for sewing cotton material together. There's not a lot of stretch, a lot of give with this cotton, and it is very uh, weak. You can take it and snap it just in your hand, so typically just plain cotton thread is not recommended uh, for sewing your leather and vinyl and rubber stuff. Another thread that I want to touch on just briefly is this pre-wax thread or this uh, what they call artificial sinew thread. This is great for you guys if you're hand stitching your leather products together but for running in these machines it is not recommended. Uh, what I've found when using this type of thread in my machine is that it gums up these tensioning discs here and it uh, slowly increases the tensioning on your upper line and on the bobbin because all the excess um, wax and whatever they use on this uh, will start coming off onto the springs down in your bobbin shuttle or on these plates here. Uh, so that's why I could see why they don't recommend this. Now I have used waxed thread in the past and been able to sew successfully with it, uh, but what I ended up doing was taking some bonded nylon and waxing the thread myself. So here's a little piece of beeswax that I use and I just do a couple swipes on the strand uh, before doing whatever project that I'm working on. I actually used this on the video that I put out where I show you guys this machine can sew through a automobile tire and I really needed this wax thread to be able to get it to slide a lot easier. I imagine if I used something like this monofilament I wouldn't run into that problem but again uh, I don't use this enough and I don't have anything of a larger size than this here. So uh, that's about it. We're going to go ahead and talk the rest of the video about the bonded nylon. Cause like I said, that is the number one recommended uh, thread to use on this machine. So that's what we have here, kind of uh, going from the smallest to the largest uh, 
gauge thread that I have here. Now when we're talking about thread size, it's important to go over this next little thing which I typed out. Now you can find all this information that I'm about to share with you guys at superiorthreads.com. Now I'm not affiliated with them, um, I don't get any kickbacks or anything like that, but I just thought it's a really good place to get some good information. And I'll leave the links down in the description box below. Uh, there's another website, uh, The Thread Exchange, that will go over here shortly. Uh, so basically, uh, under their heading of how threads is measured, I think this is kind of important, so I want to read through this with you guys. The uh, text system, most likely derived from the word textile, was created as a new standard of consistent thread measurement and intended to replace all methods of measurements of threads. Uh, this obviously hasn't happened yet, and I say the reason why this hasn't happened is because quilters love the weight standard or the number standard for their threads. So if you've been looking out for threads and you see like 40 WT, that's 40 weight thread, that's one measurement. And then the other measurement they're talking about is where you see the number sign or the pound sign followed by a number. Uh, that is the uh, number standard. Uh, so, yeah, that's the difference between those three different ways of measuring the threads. I found typically when we're dealing with bonded nylon, it is in the text format or the T format. Uh, so I haven't had a lot of issues with that personally. Now, the text uh, measurement for this is a weight measurement as well. So for every thousand meters of thread... Uh, it goes by the weight. So if you have a thousand meters uh, and that thread weighs one gram, that would be a T1 thread like I shared with you over here with the cotton. And if you have a thousand meters of thread and it weighs 25 grams, then that would be a T25 and so forth and so on. So hopefully that's giving you guys a little bit of back information of how they size the threads and what those different measurements stand for. And once again, you can find that at superiorthreads.com. Now, what I really like about this next website, the Thread Exchange, is they actually offer you a conversion table from the standard numbered weight to the text weight. And uh, I'll share that with you real quick. So if you guys want to uh, take a look at that and pause the video, you can. And I thought that that was real helpful, especially in the beginning when I was deciding what threads I wanted to use. And then this lower chart here, this is kind of a condensed uh, chart like they have on their webpage. And this also shows you the recommended needle sizes to use with the different size threads. So a lot of great information over at the Thread Exchange. Now, a lot of people have asked the questions of, uh, you know, I know there's different size threads and needle combinations I can use, but I'm specifically looking for sewing, you know, three to six ounce leather or six to eight or 12 ounce leather and all those. So I uh, wrote down um, three, you know, possible examples of weight leather that you guys might be working with and a couple recommendations for you guys. So if you're sewing uh, some soft leather, some really lightweight leather, something around the range of, uh, you know, three to five ounces, I would recommend the number 46 or the number 69 thread. Uh, and if you guys want to see what that translates into as the text threads, refer to your uh, thread exchange chart. Uh, so anywhere from the number 46 to the number 69, um, and then the needle size that's recommended for those is anything as low as a 14 uh, going up to the size 18 needle. So that's kind of the ranges that you have for that uh, three, uh, yeah, three to five ounce leather and something that's really nice and soft and supple. So as we move up into size something like, you know, uh, six to eight ounce leather, you're going to want to move up in the size of thread as well. And when you do that, your needle size is going to jump. So for recommended for the six to eight ounce leather is the uh, number 92 thread all the way up to the number 138 size thread. And the needles that you're going to want to use with that system is ranging anywhere from uh, the size 18 
all the way up to a size 21 needle. And then for your thickest stuff, which is going to be real rigid or real thick uh, material, up to 12 ounces, they recommend using the 207 and the number 277 thread. And with those larger gauge threads, you're going to at least need a 22 size needle and up. So hopefully that's helped you guys kind of figure out where you want to go. And like I said, you can find all this information at the Thread Exchange. Now, one important thing that I want to go over on the needles is I get a lot of questions with people saying, okay, I want to use that 207 thread with a 22 size needle. Do I need to mod modify my machine in any way to be able to run something that large? And the answer to that is no. Um, you can use the HA times one or the 15 times one shank size and find a needle that is large enough to handle that thread. And that's what I've done here uh, with the needles that I have set up. Uh, I have sizes ranging from the very lowest side, which is 14, all the way up to the 22. Uh, so that is not a necessity. The only thing that I would recommend is if you guys wanted the specialty needles, so the leather cutting needles that have have the different angles or chisel tips and things of that nature, you will need to look into modifying your needle bar because those needles are typically on a post or a shank size that's used on industrial leather sewing machines. Uh, the HA times one and the 15 times one post or shank size is used on uh, this machine and like your old Singer sewing machines and things like that. They're, they consider them a kind of a home needle, not really a industrial size needle, even though you can get the larger size gauges uh, with using that post size. Uh, if you guys are interested in modifying your needle bar to be able to use those specialty tip needles, uh, I'll leave a link down in the description to an awesome Facebook group you guys can join. And once you become a member of that group, they actually have a section where they have uh, files in PDF format to show you all different kinds of modifications people have done to their sewing machine. And the needle bar modification is on there. So I thought you guys would enjoy that if that's something that you're interested in. Uh, these needles here that I'm using are all the same tip. They are called the universal tip. So basically what that means is it's just a regular needle point. There's no, um, you know, chisel sides on it. It's not, you know, really sharp or anything. It's just very pointy and it's used for all kinds of things. I've used these universal tip needles on everything that I've sewn here and I've sewn rubber, leather, vinyl, cotton, uh, polyester, all kinds of different types of materials on the machine, and I've never found that I needed to buy a specialty type needle um, for those different projects. But if that's something you're interested in, I would definitely look into the modifications. Uh, so the size threads here, I think that's the last thing to kind of go over. Um, these are all the bonded nylon threads that I use. Uh, this is the smallest stuff here. I've since lost the sticker off of this spool, so I don't know the exact size, but I'm going to guess it's a number 46 uh, size thread because, like I said, it's a lot smaller than all of these threads here. So the next one up from there is the T70 thread, and I'll kind of show you the sticker so you guys can see what you're going to be looking at when you're ordering your threads. And the interesting thing about the T70 is this is kind of where your at-home sewing machines stop. So you guys can see this little Singer sewing machine back here. Um, this Singer here cannot actually handle this uh, T70 thread, but I've been told that basic home sewing machines can handle up to thread this size some can't and that's where you're really going to need a, a machine like this to be able to handle these larger threads uh, the next size up here is a t90 and you can see they also have the standard weight measurement in there as well so a number 92 is the same as a t90 thread and then a lot of you guys are probably familiar with this thread this is my t135 Yep, T135 thread. Um, I don't see any standard numbers on here that kind of correlate with that. But I'll just kind of give you a close-up of the sticker. Uh, this is a government-grade thread. I, I don't know what that means. Um, 
but it is a very strong heavy duty thread. I use this stuff for like putting together backpacks, repairing shoes, uh, tool belts, things of that nature. Uh, I can actually go up in size on thread to the 207, which I think I'm going to be doing here shortly. I think I'm going to purchase some of the 207 thread and run my 22 size needle because I haven't had a chance to run that needle yet. I've tapped into all these other ones, but I haven't gone to that stage yet. So hopefully this video has helped you guys with a few of your questions that you've had in regards to needle combinations and thread combinations. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in and for your continued support. Uh, don't forget, if you're not already, hit that subscribe button down below and uh, check out our description box. There's a few changes down there. I deleted some of our social media links and added a few links in there. So uh, take a look at that. There's also been some changes going on in our channel and um, actually focusing more now on the, the leather crafting, the sewing, and the fiber production. I'm not really going to be putting out too many more homesteading videos or you know other off-topic videos. I'm going to try to narrow my focus this year in 2020. So uh, again, thank you guys so much and as always, take care and spend time with that family.